I'm Lindsay. And I'm Sarah, and together we're the co-founders of Whale Tales, a living library of cetacean stories. It's still Orca Action Month! <laughs> and to celebrate, we are continuing to do things a little bit differently on the podcast, and this is the last time for this year. <laughs> <laughs> so sit back and enjoy as we dive right in. Hello again. Happy Orca Action Month. Hope it's been full of Orca action. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Or if you're coming at this later and it's no longer June, welcome. Yay, Orcas. We hope you had a good June. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We have. (laughs) We've Mm. been highlighting Orcas with terrific tales from around the globe every week this month. And today we're finishing off by looking at Gladys. Ooh. Yeah. But Gladys does not refer to just one killer whale. Mm-hmm. Beginning in 2020, a subpopulation of orcas began ramming boats and attacking their rudders in waters off the Iberian Peninsula between Spain and Portugal. You may have heard about this <laughs> <Yes>. if you've <laughs> been on the internet. Yeah. Recently. It was a bit of a, a meme. Okay, so a little bit about this subpopulation. The Iberian orca subpopulation lives in the coastal waters of the Iberian Peninsula and is genetically distinct from other orca populations in the Northeast Atlantic. This group of orca follow the seasonal migration of mm. Atlantic bluefin tuna, uh, Tunis tinus, uh, which is their primary food source. Mm-hmm. And a complete census of the Iberian orca subpopulation was undertaken in 2011, so long before any of the sort of, like, fanciful news-catching things had started. And at that time, they found 39 members divided into five pots. The subpopulation was listed as endangered by the Spanish National Catalog of Endangered Species that same year, in 2011. And in 2019, they were listed as critically endangered in the IUCN Red List. I was reading that so just like longly and not figuring out. I'm like, oh, IUCN. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could say, because um, I just abbreviated it, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't think I've thought about what it means for like yeah. 20 years. <laughs> so, like same with Sarah. Well, I guess that one makes more sense. Species at risk. Yeah. Anyway, 2020 journal article, which we'll link to in the show notes, called Killer Whales of the Strait of Gibraltar, an Endangered Subpopulation Showing a Disruptive Behavior by Ruth Esteban et al. This is not free access, sadly. Analyzed photographic evidence and testimonies from the incidents and identified 31 distinct orcas, nine of which had direct contact with the vessels and were given the designation Gladys. The name Gladys is a reference to the old scientific name for orcas, or sinus gladiator, which means whale fighter in Latin, which is which can effing I cool. Holy crap. I have never heard of Me either. Before. This is amazing. And I wrote a blog about the naming of killer whales. Man, like, there are already so many memes about these orcas but why like none of them are wearing gladiator outfits like where is that art please make it for us (laughs) okay two pods of orcas were identified including one including the adult gladys blanca or white gladys and her own offspring uh gladys philabres who was born in 2021 and her sisters gladys delilah and gladys clara this is confusing i know gladys blanca's (laughs) mother Gladys Lamari was also observed, but never approached the vessels. The second pod consists of three juveniles, Gladys Grease, uh, Gla- Grey Gladys, and the siblings Gladys Peque and Gladys Negra, or uh, Black Gladys, as well as their mother, Gladys Erbile, who was occasionally observed during the interactions, but did not participate. By 2023, the number of Gladyses had increased to 15. Is this starting to sound like the wizards in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> a little bit. Just or the, bit. the wizards or the dwarves. Yeah, the dwarves. Yes. Yeah, there's the gray, gray Gladys where, the, you know, she died oh, yes. in the Mines of Moria and then came back as white Gladys. <laughs> we can also include a link in the show notes to the Orca, Iberian Orca website iberian mm. orca iberian.org or orca atlantica which has kind of like a makeshift family tree nice. of all of the gladyses uh, i'll put that in the show notes right now and it is just really funny to look at because 
It's just funny that all of them are named Gladys. It's such well, a funny it, name. It also strikes me as a bit of like, like 007 kind of, yeah. or like spy yeah. names of like, <laughs> or like Dread Pirate Roberts, like they all yeah. inherit the name. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, it is very, the Dread Pirate Roberts of the Killer Whale world. I love this. Yeah. Yeah. Since 2020, there have been around 500 recorded interactions between all of the Gladyses and Vessels. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. Over 250 boats have been damaged, and four vessels have been fully sunk by all of these orcas. The frequency of attacks has continued to increase over time, and researchers from the Atlantic Orca Working Group reported that uh, about 20% of vessels having physical interactions with the orcas have been severely damaged. Thankfully, at this time, no humans have been harmed during any of the interactions, including the vessel sinking, but it's important to be aware. Yeah. Yeah. The rate of these interactions prompted the formation of the Atlantic Orca Working Group and a Facebook group, Orca Attack Reports, which uh, was created to facilitate the sharing of information about the interactions. Radio warnings have been issued alerting vessels to the Orca's presence and suggesting to keep a distance. Oh, shocking. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) There's also... In 2023, they and there was an announcement of the development and testing of acoustic deterrents to dissuade orcas. Uh, this was announced by the Portuguese National Association of Cruise Ships. And also in 2023, the Sp- Spanish government planned to satellite tag three of the orcas or six of the orcas involved in these attacks in order to track their movements and minimize further interactions. Uh, and we don't want to talk too much about the attacks themselves. Uh, suffice to say that it's clearly like if you've seen any nature documentary about any other kind of ecotype of orca and their crazy sort of coordinated hunting behaviors, it's that, Mm. but against a boat. And usually mid-sized boats, so things like small catamarans or sailboats, um, they're not going after like massive ships or kayaks. So it seems to be mid-sized boats, and there have been cases of them just like fully ripping the rudder Mm -hmm. off of the vessel. (laughs) Not to mention sinking the vessels. The You might be wondering, well, why? Why do this? Why are the Gladyses Gladysing? <laughs> and that same 2020 article, sorry, 2022 article that Lindsay mentioned above suggested various possible motivations for the behavior. It is possible, possibility one, that the interactions are just playful and a result of Orca's natural curiosity. So researcher Deborah Giles... Giles said that the orcas are incredibly curious and playful animals, and so this might be more of a play thing as opposed to an aggressive thing. Gibraltar-based marine biologist Eric Shaw argued that the orcas were displaying protective behaviors and were intentionally targeting the rudder with the understanding that it would immobilize the vessel, just as attacking the tail of a prey animal would immobilize it, which is a documented predation behavior. The behavior could also be a combination of factors including disturbances created by vessels, depletion of the orca's prey, and interaction with fisheries. Basically, interacting with fishing boats like led, led to, to food, this. And yeah. so now interacting with boats means there might be food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But whichever way you look at it, the Gladyses are making headlines, and they are a great reminder that orcas are large powerful and curious animals Mm. that we need to respect so we didn't think there was a better orca that we could use to close out orca action month yeah just as a reminder i know that gladyses are a lot of fun and there's lots of great memes about them and we all enjoy all of those Uh, but there have been attacks from humans on these Mm -hmm. orcas and uh, as we said earlier In general, they're animals, and also they are endangered, so that's something to keep in mind. And also large and powerful, Mm -hmm. and can rip the rudder off of your boat. And we're in their space. Yes, also that. So just as a reminder to, I don't even know how to say this, like, keep it chilly, chill, chill? I don't know. (laughs) Like, we don't want to encourage people to attack orcas. Is no. or trying what to, trying to get across, and we or also to, don't want to encourage orcas to. No, exactly. We too, which but we have less sway over what the orcas do than. Well, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, some people. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> my point is, it's all fun and games until it's not. So just, yeah, yeah. respect for everybody. Yeah. And that's Gladys or Gladyses or the wizards of <laughs> Middle Earth, whatever you want to call them. 
before we go, we want to take a quick moment to tell you about one of the ways you can support our podcast and everything we do at Whale Tales. You can join us by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash whale tales for a dollar a month at the porpoise level, five dollars a month at the dolphin level, or ten dollars a month at the whale level. You can get access to a variety of perks. For example, special this month, our whale level patrons will be have been treated to our special Patreon only podcast, Whale Tales <laughs> Watches, where we talked about the classic Free Willy <laughs> Two. <It's a> generous <laughs> descriptor. <laughs> Well, that's why I paused before the two. <laughs> uh, thanks, patrons. We love having you along for the ride. And if you can't support us financially, we completely understand. Thank you for listening. We would love to hear your thoughts on this episode or any of our episodes. So please visit our website, whale-tales.org, and find links to all of our social media handles so that you can drop us a line. You can also head to our website to subscribe to the podcast and read over 1,400 whale, dolphin, and porpoise stories. Uh, something I forgot to say during all these yeah. other episodes is that we do have over 600 killer whale stories on oh our gosh. website to peruse. A lot of them including are included hunting animals in really cool and epic ways, if that's something you want to read about. Uh, we don't have any stories about I Iberian orcas, so if anybody has an encounter with them, we would absolutely love to hear it. Of course, any other killer whale or cetacean also would love to hear those. Our website is at whale-tales.org. Tales like the stories, not tales like the animal. Finally, we want to acknowledge that we recorded today's episode on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples and the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, as well as the homelands of the Tuasin First Nation. We will be back next month with a regularly scheduled Whale Tales podcast mm. and we're not gonna tease what it is because you'll just have to listen to find out i know we have what loved, it is <laughs> <laughs> we have loved coming into your eardrums uh a little bit more this month uh it's been fun for us and we hope it's been fun for you so thank you very very much again for listening and supporting us and we hope you have a whaley great day yay yay happy orca happy, happy orca month. month we did it